Here we have it. The first look at uh, TRC Classic Freedom in natural canvas micarta. With this lovely satin finish. Andres told me himself that this is a blade he carries with him on a daily basis and that let me know that this is a special, special blade in the best of ways. I hope to have this as my new EDC and I hope it to be slicey as hell to be honest. Oops. I'm not too concerned about getting rust spots here because this blade is made in M390 which is sort of the most corrosion resistant steel that I know of. I am very much looking forward to putting this blade to good use. I think it's going to be a lot of fun making this video review and uh, I think this is going to be one of those blades that I you know, keep carrying with me for a long time to come. But you know this is just the first glimpse of it before we, before we do the unboxing part and then putting the blade to some real life work. Man, this blade, the fit and finish, the grind lines. This is, you know, TRC perfection, I would like to call it. When you get one of these knives, regardless of model, you know you're in for a, you know, the highest quality blade you can pretty much get your hands on. Wow. Just wow. See how it looks like out in the sun. Get some water drops off. But... Yeah, look at that. This this is. Uh... This is what perfection looks like. It's time for the unboxing part of the video. Uh, you have already seen the knife uh, in a nicer way, in a better setting than this boring table. But with all of my in-depth uh, reviews, I do these uh, unboxing parts. Uh, so this is what a box looks like when the knife is uh, delivered to you. I mean, there is usually a box uh, that this box is inside. But uh, the actual knife box looks like this. It is the, the standard box for all knives made by TRC. So opening it up, there will be no surprises for me since this is my fourth box, I believe. Um, this is what awaits inside the box. So we've got some um, ballistol or ballistic oil, I guess the, it's short for. Um, pretty good uh, to wipe down the blade with. You can buy it uh, vibes like this or you can actually buy it in spray cans or in small glass bottles uh, in just you know, regular liquid oil. You get some, um, some you get one. Uh, TRC Knives uh, sticker and then you get, as with all knives made by TRC, you get this uh, small booklet. And this booklet uh, follows pretty much the same pattern for all the models, different models. Uh, starting off with some uh, words and information about uh, the founder and maker of TRC, which is Andrus Frisius. Then you get some information about the model itself, and this is, of course, the classic Freedom model. 
uh, get some additional information here with the you know intended use uh, of this model carrying on we get some uh, maintenance information uh, we get some um, uh, additional maintenance then we go to the lifetime warranty then we get to the certificate of authenticity stating which model it is the classic freedom uh, the serial number uh, the blade finish the steel hardness uh, m390 at 6162 uh, handle material being natural canvas micarta and date of uh, production and then the signature so that is um, that is the booklet and then we get to the to the good part to the best part which is the actual knife itself and looking at this I can tell right away that it is a bit different from my other knives uh, this is my first experience or first encounter with the leather sheets made by TRC knives uh, all my other knives the apocalypse the Milkuri and the South Pole all came with a Kydex sheath. This one comes with a black leather sheath. Uh, there is also a Kydex sheath available, so should you prefer a Kydex sheath over leather, uh, you will be able to order directly from TRC a, a Kydex sheath for your classic freedom. Uh, worth knowing. Let's see taking the knife out and removing this nice looking hard box so here is the knife so this is um, by far my my smallest and lightest knife by TRC um, maybe we should actually start by checking out the sheath a bit i mean this is this is an unboxing video it's not you know going into the close details and everything but while we're at it why not just you know take a look so i'm gonna remove the knife otherwise we're just gonna look at it but this is this is what the sheath looks like it is quite thick and sturdy uh, it to me it feels like it's made out of you know great quality leather um, the seams and everything will look look good, look great. I mean, it feels great, it looks great, and I sort of expect nothing less from TRC. They do make the best Cadex sheets in the world, in my opinion. So uh, I'm not at all surprised that the leather sheets are great as well. I mean, you can actually buy leather sheets for the Apocalypse, for the South Pole, and for the Milikuri as well, uh, but. The Kydex is the standard for that those models, uh, the same way that the leather is the standard for for this specific model. So the sheath overall looks, uh, you know, it looks really you know useful, functional, and sturdy and of great quality. Good start. Next up, the actual knife itself. Maybe I should actually start zooming in now. We don't have to focus on a big box. I'm gonna do that. Give me one second. Ah, oh, this is this is much better. Now we can actually take a look at uh, uh, the details of this knife. So as you can see, this is uh, not a very large knife. Um, I think that if we're, if we're gonna go over the specs, I mean the specs were presented in the beginning of the video, but we might as well go over them uh, here and now. The steel use for this specific model is M390 um, with a, a hardness of uh, 61 to 62 HRC. Uh, it's a satin blade, satin finish. The handle is um, natural canvas micarta. It's also offered in, in black canvas micarta. It's sort of a, a polished handle. My other knives from TRC are also made with natural canvas micarta handles. Aside from the Milikuri, now that I think about it, that one is only offered in, in Black Micarta. But where the other blades have a more matte finish to it, this one has a more glossy, polished uh, finish to it. Not sure there's much difference in actual, maybe this one is... Maybe, maybe a tad bit more. 
I'm not, I don't, I don't want to say slippery, but you know, not as, not as grippy as the other blades. But that can also have to do with, uh, with the actual texture of the blade and not just uh, the finish of the micarta itself. Anyways, um, the overall length of this blade is uh, 210 millimeters, meaning it's uh, 21 centimeters. Uh, the blade length, I believe, is around 90. Five uh, millimeters, so 9.5 centimeters. Uh, the blade thickness, and this is also now. Now it's getting interesting. The blade thickness. Let's see if you can. I think I maybe I zoomed out a bit too much before. Regardless, the blade thickness is 2.7 millimeters. That means that this is a fairly thin blade. You can also see some of the jimping. There's some fine, fine jimping going on here. Um, so this is this is a, a small, thin slicer in M390, which is a, a really, really fantastic steel, is my experience. But this is my first fixed blade in M390. All my other blades in that blade steel uh, are, are folders. Uh, the edge retention should be pretty impressive, to say the least. Uh, the sharpness process might be uh, a bit longer, though. Uh, still, uh, did we mention the weight of the knife? I don't think I did. Uh, and I forgot to bring out my, my scales. But I, I do think that, uh, that the weight is about 90 to 100 grams. So this is this is a, a really light knife uh, Absolutely light knife I wear size 10 in gloves you can see here in my hand This is a, a super comfortable knife, you know, there there is There's lots of handle going on here. I can feel right away that there's never gonna be any hot spots using this blade impossible uh, I've always praised TRC for their for their ergonomics, handle ergonomics, and this certainly is no exception. The handle ergos are just, you know, it's it's incredible to say the least. Especially for a blade this thin, you know, you could think that it would be a bit more uh, uncomfortable using, but this one feels absolutely great. Could be my it could potentially be like the most comfortable knife from TRC or out of all my knives because this is this knife it melts into your hand that's quite exceptional so uh, this uh, I guess this sort of concludes the, um, the unboxing part uh, which means we can now focus on more interesting aspects. Now we can get a close-up at the sheath as well. Maybe we should remove this. But this is what the sheath looks like. Thick, high-quality leather. So let's... Um Let's, for the sake of this video segment, let's put it put it back into the box before we start with some uh, some easier tasks, indoor tasks like um, simple cutting tasks, slicing some um, magazine paper, slicing um, printing paper doing some random small feathers, you know, stuff like that. And then we head outside and uh, focus on some other tasks. But I mean, there's going to be no like, no batoning, no chopping, no branching and stuff like that. I will come up with other tasks. I mean, this knife was not designed for, for heavy woodwork tasks. I mean, this is a, a totally different design from the other TRC knives that I own. Um, but I will be sure to, to showcase it uh, in the best uh, manner of ways. So, let's zoom out a bit. 
This is probably the last time this knife is going to be put in this box. From now on it will be carried. Here we have the Classic Freedom and the South Pole. It would of course have been interesting to also have the This Is Freedom here, since it's quite similar, uh, or, well not quite similar, but more similar to the Classic Freedom and what the South Pole is. Then again, it is interesting taking a look at the South Pole design, uh, comparing it to the Classic Freedom, both of them being rather small knives. Uh, as you can see, the Classic Freedom is delivered with the leather sheath as a standard and the South Pole is delivered with the Kydex sheath as standard. Uh, you can however get the South Pole with the leather sheath uh, or you can at least order a leather sheath for it uh, and you can also order a Kydex sheath for your Classic Freedom. Um, and that is something that I'm planning to do since I will use this one a lot when I'm out kayaking and I prefer Kydex over leather uh, in those specific environments. Regardless, let's take a look at these blades uh, unsheathing them. So we can see straight up that uh, these are two uh, uh, somewhat uh, different designs. See if I can get the camera to work a bit with me. And uh, maybe I should put them also spine to spine. Like that. I mean the camera isn't perfect. I can't get it, you know, to be exactly on top, so some proportions might look a bit off. Uh, I'm not gonna go over all the specs again. I did post them in the beginning of the uh, the video uh, in the opening of this specific segment. But we can see as uh, uh, so, some things with the design here. So the South Pole has a wider and thicker handle. It has this finger groove. It has a more pronounced, deeper uh, jimping on the spine. Uh, there is some jimping going on on the Classic Freedom as well, but it's very minor. Uh, and well, you know, the spine thickness overall, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but uh, it is uh, quite quite a difference, let's see there, uh, in spine thickness, uh, meaning that the South Pole is indeed a tougher uh, or stronger blade. Uh, the South Pole is made in uh, LMAX, whereas the Classic Freedom is made in M390, being this one being the more corrosion resistant and uh, better edge holding blade slightly more work to sharpen compared to the South Pole. In hand, let's see, uh, both of these knives feel great in hand, fits my hand well. Let's see like this, perhaps. Huh. Not easy squeezing in in the camera, limited camera window. Um, so this one is of course the slicier of the two. This one is more a do-it-all. I mean I've done a lot of things with this knife uh, and if you watch my review of the South Pole you know it can handle a ton of different tasks. Some of them really really tough. Uh, the video review for this one, the one I'm making right now, is going to be and look a bit different since this is a, a much, you know, finer blade but it's still gonna be a, a a blade that can you know be withstand a lot of hard hard use and hard work there is a significant um, difference in weight to these two I mean none of these blades are particularly you know heavy these are both very light blades but this is uh, this is like a feather and this is uh, well, like a, a couple of feathers in weight. Both of them have 
natural canvas micarta scales, but as you can see the Classic Freedom has more of a polished and also slightly darker natural canvas micarta, whereas the South Pole has this uh, lighter, um, uh, lighter color and also more matte finish with some texture going on here on the, on the handle for additional grip. This one really does look kind of glossy. It does have some uh, some texture like you know like waves or something like that, ripples here, um, which feels quite good. I mean, this is a very very comfortable blade. I mean, I did say that uh, the South Pole is a comfortable blade, and it, it is comfortable. But the texture here for the extra grip uh, compared to this uh, to this texture is uh, well, this is nicer to the hand. Then again, I, I do not expect to do the heavy chores I'm gonna do with this one. So I do prefer, I do prefer the texture on the South Pole and I do prefer this more smooth texture on the Classic Freedom because they have different, uh, uh, different uses, different purposes. So I mean, it's probably not a, a it's probably not a, a surprise or you know, it's probably not random why the different handles look and feel the way they do. I think that's, you know, it's been given some thought. Uh, also, you can see there are hollow pins on this, uh, on the Classic Freedom, compared to these uh, special pins of sorts on the, on the South Pole. So, which is the better blade? I mean, that's, I'm not going to be able to, <laughs> to answer that question, not even after making these reviews because these blades are um, these blades they are different and they have different I was uses by how much I like the classic freedom because I waited some time getting it my first one was the apocalypse of course uh, and then I went with uh, Milukuri and the, no then I went with the South Pole and then the Milukuri uh, because I wasn't sure how I would like this one but when I got it I honestly felt like maybe I should have started with this one. That is some pretty high praise. You know, as a pairing knife or a companion knife, this one is, I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome. And you know, when I, when I make this, when I'm recording this comparison, I know this is showing up like one of the first segments in my video review, but uh, this is actually something I'm recording after having done a lot of work with this one. I've done all the slicing tests and shaving tests and uh, you know the food prep and everything and, and this knife, I mean it's it is an impressive tool uh, but it's impressive in other regards compared to the South Pole. Uh, I think that if I... I did mention bringing this when I'm out kayaking. I've only been out for one or two times so far with it but uh, if I could only pick one of these two and have it as my only tool when I go out kayaking, I would actually pick the South Pole uh, because I know, you know, how much that knife can handle. Uh, but this is a this is a, a really nice lightweight alternative. You know, I, I really I, I really like how this knife, you know, works. It's pretty extraordinary. So all in all. These are two uh, fantastic blades and, you know, depending on what you want to use them for. Um, and it's difficult looking in the camera, like, let's see like this. You know, depending on, on your main usage of the knife, uh, the Classic Freedom might be the better one or the South Pole might be the one you are after. So I think I, I'm going to suggest you to look at uh, uh, to look at both reviews to try to make up your mind if you're deciding between one of these. Uh, I will say that the, the classic, uh, the classic, not the classic freedom, uh, the this is freedom would be placed somewhere here in between because this is freedom has a longer blade, a slightly thicker spine, so um, maybe that would have been a, a more uh, uh, a more uh, appropriate uh, um, comparison, but uh, I still think that this is uh, 
this is a, a valid um, comparison. So I'm not sure what else to say right now. Hopefully you have you know gotten some answers just watching this, watching the two blades uh, side by side. Yeah, I think that's it. Here we have a few different kinds of paper. We have some magazine paper, regular printing paper, and then some, um, well, I'm not sure what to call this paper, but it's it's thin, you know. But uh, let's start with, um, with the printing paper. I'm gonna see if I can do my best to show within the camera. So like I stated, regular printing paper, fairly thin, um, not sure what else to say. And I mean, this this um, uh, slicing test is going to be a bit more important, I believe, than with my other TRC knives, because this is, to me, uh, this is supposed to be a real slicer, so I expect it to cut like laser going through this this piece of paper. Oops. So, um, I think it's doing fairly well. What do you say? And this is the sharpness out of the box. So I have not, you know, I have not put this knife on the strop or anything at all. And a larger piece is left. So I think this concludes the um, the printing paper. Let's head on with something else now. Next up we have the magazine paper to slice and given how this blade performed cutting the, the printing paper I think we're gonna have a pretty fun time uh, playing around with this, uh, with this paper. I think I'm actually gonna have to zoom out just a tad bit. That would be a bit better, I think. Yeah, so let's see what we can do. Okay, let's take another page do some some other types of slicing maybe just take one more
Oops. Let's see. Pretty, pretty nice feeling, you know, slicing through these these pages. Feels good in some sense. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I feel um, I feel pretty pretty happy with the slicing performance when it comes to um, cutting paper. Just hope it shows in the camera somewhat. I can't really see how well it. Shows maybe if I. I'm not sure. Maybe you have to zoom out a bit more. I do think you are starting to get like the general idea, to be honest. But uh, One last page. It will slice. For sure. So last but not least, I want to try this uh, uh, this paper. It's it's pretty thin. I think these are actually like three or four. So I guess these papers are something in between, like printing paper and. Uh, um, Magazine paper, I'm not quite sure, but it's really it's really thin, so it's probably gonna blow away when the, when the wind starts picking up here again, but let's see, we might have to adjust the camera a tad bit, something like that maybe. Now look at this knife. I mean, I know this is the paper slice intestine wall, but just, you know, look at this. Yep, let's, let's try it out now. So this paper was probably a bit more of a challenge, or oh, well, still, I mean, 
challenge, I guess it's all relative, but uh, um, not, not much of a challenge either, to be honest. I think it sliced really well. Um, let's take one more here real fast. I think the only problem here is actually shoving in the camera. That is, that is this tricky part. Uh, zoom out a bit more again. Let's go ahead. Some bonus cuts. I mean, to think that this is the sharpness out of the box. I was gonna say almost out of the factory, but this is no factory. This is like a small, really small company with, with very few people that make, you know, these these awesome, awesome tools. I think I'm gonna say that this is probably the sharpest knives, the sharpest knife that I've ever done my, you know, my cutting tests with. I mean, this is, this is pretty, pretty extreme to be honest. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say. I am, I am very, very impressed. I expected this knife to perform well. Uh, I would have been very disappointed if it didn't slice these papers uh, well, but I, I did not expect it to slice paper like it did now, because this is, uh, well, I mean, if I had a dedicated paper slicing knife, this knife would be it. Can't wait to cut up some, you know, vegetables, fruits, etc. with this one. That's gonna be a lot of fun. I bet you can make some nice feathers with it as well. Fantastic, fantastic performance, no doubt. Wow. Welcome to this new segment of my videos where I'm gonna shave off some of my leg hair that I've been saving for, well, for some time, uh, just for this particular review. Uh, I'm actually not quite sure how visible this is, but I thought we could take a look at uh, uh, the shaving sharpness of the TRC Classic Freedom. So, <clears throat> let's see if we can get some of this this hair off. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but uh, hopefully it will be sort of visible. Uh, I can't see it in the camera, but it doesn't matter. It's pretty good. Sure, my wife is going to like this. The things you do for a knife review. Yeah, that looks pretty, pretty messed up, to be honest. I mean, it looks, um, it's very smooth. So, um, if this is, uh, what you think is gonna be the, the main use uh, if you get this knife, so I mean, then it's gonna perform really good. Gonna have the, the smoothest legs um, out of all your friends and family. All in all, I give this um, shaving nine out of 10 racers. So let's see if we can work some magic here, making some uh, some feathers from this uh, piece of wood. I'm gonna try some other pieces later on, but this was just laying around, so I thought we could we could do you know do with that right now. 
not gonna try this nutty part here, but uh, let's just see if we have any focus at all. Let's see what we can do. Oops, I know it's maybe not the best. Actually, let's go at it again. On the other side, like like this, maybe yeah. Make them curls, huh? I mean, not your typical bushcraft knife, but I mean, you can't deny the curls that you get here. Actually, not too bad, in my opinion. Let's go for some more on the other side. I don't know, maybe go for them here. Not sure. Away with that. Start again. Easily get a fire going with those. Can probably go for one more. Let's see. Let's try here. Might be a bit too hard. Too bad. So this would definitely be, you know, sufficient uh, to, to work, you know, to make a fire. Um, no doubt. Since the Classic Freedom is uh, a real slicer, I'm going to focus on food prep and I've decided to divide the food prep into three different parts. Uh, the first one being some, uh, you know, different fruits here, like a tropical theme of sorts. Then we're going to go on to uh, um, vegetables and after that we're going to cut some uh, fish and meat. So this is going to be... Uh, the first part we're gonna cut up some lime, we have a pineapple, some oranges, lemons and grapes. Uh, so hopefully this will be an enjoyable meal uh, once I am done. I think to start it all off we're gonna go with, um, with the pineapple. I think that will be the most interesting uh, piece of fruit. Uh, since it is the largest and this knife is not uh, I mean, this is not a very big knife. So I, I think it 
the pineapple can provide the most uh, interesting challenge in some sense so and there are a few different ways to prepare a pineapple uh, I'm gonna do the version that I find to be uh, the best and gives you the most meat but uh, I'm not saying it's the only way to do it or that it is the correct way or anything but uh, yeah I'm gonna do it my way that is I guess uh, what I am saying sort of so um, but as you can see I mean the, the cutting length of this knife and, and the pineapple you know with it's gonna be I'm gonna have to improvise a bit but I mean that's that's what we're gonna do not much to it to be honest Let's see Away. So I start off by removing the, the top or the hat of the pineapple Then I'm gonna try to make a, a good base for it to stand on here um, Go like this I think I mean a, a longer blade would have been preferable of course, but Sometimes you have to make do with what you have now we have a solid base, it can stand on like this and we can start removing the, you know, I don't even know the English word, but kind of the, the scales or whatever you want to call it, sort of. Not sure how well it will be seen in the camera, but uh, you know, it is sort of what it is. Gonna have to work a bit with some of the the ice or whatever it's called that's being left over here. So I tend to remove too little from time to time because I don't wanna I don't wanna lose the meat. Get greedy. So now we're gonna do some uh, some fine tuning here, um, removing some of these. I think they are called eyes or something like that. I'm not quite sure to be honest. Get a, a nice. I mean, we want to waste as little meat as, as possible. And with a sharp knife like this, that's not too difficult, you know, just removing like that. This looks 
it's pretty good. So now we're gonna split it in four pieces. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see, but you can see the core here, and that is something that we're gonna remove once we have split this into four separate pieces. Now we will see if the blade length is uh, is enough. I'm gonna have to do it. Yeah, it's gonna be tight, but it's actually. I think I actually did manage to separate it like that. Uh, you could, if you wanted, remove the core like that and like that, or you can just split it in four pieces and then remove it. Uh, it doesn't matter really which way you do it. I'm gonna do it like this for one piece. And we could try to uh, maybe remove it the other way around as well. Let's see if we can do that too. Then we can show you know both ways of removing it. the core. Let's see. The core is too hard to eat. I mean it's not something you want to try to eat but here the core is pretty much uh, maybe not completely removed now it is I might as well just do like that like that here we can just do like this instead the other way of removing the core There we go. So now we have some nice pieces here. Um, you can decide yourself, I mean, depending on how you want to prepare them and what you want to do with it. Uh, you can go for, I mean, long pieces if you want to, I don't know, put them on the grill or anything, but you can also go with just uh, um, like, you know, small pieces like this if you just want, you know. Small, easy to eat pieces, sort of. That. You can slice them as thick or as thin as you want them. I mean, it's, it's totally up to your own um, personal preferences. Have you? How you want them prepared and stuff like that, but you can also make like I still have some remove some of this. It's a bit hard. There we go. So if you want to make some. Longer pieces in some sense, like this. left there. And it smells absolutely, absolutely wonderful. I forgot to bring a plate. I'm gonna bring a plate uh, so we can put this all up on it. I'll be back in in a second. But uh, I should probably say right away that uh, despite um, the small knife and you know the the limited uh, you know blade length, cutting length, uh, it is still you know fully possible to process a regular sized uh, 
pineapple with it. So that is good. It performed, uh, in my opinion, it performed really well. Uh, but I'll be right back with a with a plate. Well, the pineapple have been placed on a plate. I decided to keep the the um, top part of the pineapple because it looks kind of nice. Uh, next up, we are doing the grapes, and usually, I mean, you don't you know cut these grapes more than once or anything like that. But since this is not you know a a ordinary food prep situation, we're gonna slice the hell out of these grapes. So um, we can start by just taking a few of them and cutting them in half but after that we can do some more uh, precision slicing or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but for now for starters let's just you know cut some some of them in half. See how that works out. Mm. This is a small laser. Incredible slicer. So, let's do some additional slicing to some of these. I mean, this is not really, you know, normal, <laughs> but um, it does make for a good slicing test, I think, in some sense. Let's take some more like that. Very skilled there. It's a small. Still some other versions, but as you can see, it is all sliced, you know. To pieces like that, sort of. Let's do it like this then. So small these grapes. Let's cut some more like this maybe. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but um, I think the, um, the Classic Freedom is a really good, dedicated grape slicer. So if that is what you're looking for, uh, I think you have found it by now. So I'm going to remove these, put them here somewhere around the pineapple, and uh, then we can proceed with, uh, I don't know, something, uh, something else. 
So next up is apparently a pair of lemons. So let's see what we can uh, accomplish with uh, with them. Yeah. Thinking of different ways to cut them, we can maybe we can just go like this with one. I mean, since we do have several, we can try a few different cutting things out. And maybe I'm making these too thin, to be honest. Not unlikely. See how many of these thin slices we can get from just one lemon. I think we're gonna say that's enough and this one I would say is disqualified um, so let's see how many we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen well that's not it's not too too bad to be honest and they're all you know pretty equally somewhat equally thin yep just have to wait over there before I let's see so what should we do with this one uh, so something completely different. Let's see. Remove some some stickers. There we go. So let's do some ordinary whatever you call these pieces. with this one well I'm actually not quite sure improvise perhaps more stickers So now we have a few different, you know, types of uh, sliced up lemons and uh, well I think the, the Classic Freedom performed quite well with uh, lemon slicing too. Uh, so I'm gonna place these on the, on the plate here and then we're gonna commence with the, uh, with the remaining lime or uh, with the oranges. We'll see what I decide to, uh, to go with. 
I decided that lime was the next logical step. So let's uh, have at it. Stay there, lime. So what are we gonna start with? Maybe some, uh, whatever. Some whatever, yeah, that's, that's a good one. It's best. Do a few of these. I mean, we have three lines, so. So now we have a few of these. Be up here in, the, in this corner. Then we can take some of these and do and cut them in some different way. Just, yeah, just because, I guess. <laughs> Maybe a tad bit thin, what do you say? <laughs> sort of too thin for most uses. Stay there. Very uneven size there. Uh. Well, got a few of those. So, what are we gonna do with this one? I am not quite sure yet. <laughs> I better be sure soon. Smells like I want to make a drink here. <laughs> Probably should not while well, cutting like this, but... Uh, so, what we have here are different, you know, a few different ways of slicing um, lime. And once again, I do think that this knife uh, is uh, working exceptionally well for, for these sort of cutting tasks. But we have not yet finished this uh, tropical food prep challenge. We have the oranges left, but I'm gonna uh, put these on the big plate and then we're gonna cut up the oranges and then we're gonna summarize this uh, first part of the food prep. So last but not least, uh, we have some uh, oranges that we need to add to our tropical, uh, uh, tropical fruit plate here. So um, let's just start by slicing it up. Thank you. 
some ordinary pieces like that. Let's see. I kind of wish you had some a little bit extra blade length when doing this. Um, to make it a bit more even. Let's remove this. I mean, the blade length is just you know, it is working, but it would have been slightly easier if it was just a tad bit longer, to be honest. So now we have a few of these pieces. Uh, I guess we could make some... Um, some halves. realize I moved the, the cutting board. So here is what we have from the two uh, oranges. So I'm gonna add these to my um, tropical fruit plate now and uh, then we're gonna summarize uh, the whole thing. So here we have the the complete plate with, uh, with the pineapple, lemon, lime, oranges, grapes. Um, I think that was pretty much it. I'm not saying that this is the best, you know, looking plate. I didn't spend a lot of time uh, putting stuff on it. But uh, uh, regardless of what it looks like, the knife here did perform really well preparing it. I mean, this is a slicer. I knew it was a slicer. M390 gets super sharp. It's got a fantastic edge holding, edge retention, and it's, you know, one of the best corrosion resistant steels out there. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy with how this knife performed um, doing these, you know, slicing cutting tests. So now this will conclude the first part of the food prep, the tropical fruit plate. Next up we're gonna do some ordinary regular vegetables and after that we're gonna cut into some, uh, uh, some fish, meat and see how it performs well, with that. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm taking a break now, I'm gonna enjoy this together with my wife and uh, after that, we might uh, proceed with uh, with the next plate. We are now proceeding to the second part of my three-part food prep segment. As you can see, we are now going to do some uh, vegetables. We have some paprika, uh, zucchini, uh, aubergine, cucumber, tomatoes. Uh, so it's uh, a bit different from from last time. Uh, I have not done any, you know, I only cleaned off the edge. I haven't really, uh, I haven't really thought about how, you know, if it's not as sharp as before. But uh, it doesn't really matter. I think it's going to be plenty sharp. Then again, I mean, we have to remember this is M390, so um, it should hold an edge forever, pretty much. Anyway, let's start this off, and I think I'm gonna start off with, uh, I don't know, maybe the paprika or something like that. Uh, so here we go. 
So I've decided that uh, we are gonna start with the paprika. Not sure we're gonna slice both of them up, but at least, uh, at the very least, one of them. See how well this can be. Maybe I should actually adjust the camera in some sense. I don't know. We will just have to see, I guess. So far, so good. It's actually it's plenty sharp. Uh, no doubt about it. It's actually, quite nice working with. So, let's just uh, slice them up a bit. So there we have one paprika all sliced up like this. Made easy work of it. Off to the plate. Next object is the zucchini. So let's see what we can do. You know, I really shouldn't go this thin. You don't cut aubergine. I mean, zucchini this this thin. I'm gonna go with some uh, some thicker slices because that is what I would normally normally do. So. 
normal thickness thin very thick no not really but uh, <laughs> or I mean well it was it was thick but Oops. Some random half moons. Yep. See what we have with that. <coughs> smaller pieces hmm. let's go some super thin anyways or not super thin but fairly thin So I think that um, I think it did a fairly good job with uh, with the Sacchini. Then we have the aubergine. Trying to get away from me. Few of these. See, I'm gonna try to cut it more. That. Oh, don't, don't escape. There we go. I know it's a waste, but. It is what it is for the sake of this video. So let's go.
guess we could take a few of these. So I guess that concludes. Oops. I guess that concludes the um, the aubergine test. So it's time to um, slice and dice this uh, this cucumber. small pieces like that. Actually we should try to go super thin here just because. I think this is probably thin enough. It actually sticks when I oops. Thin. Or uneven. Sort of thin as well. Let's see. Tricky business. Well, so that concludes the, um, the cucumber test. Finally, we have a couple of tomatoes that I'm going to slice up in some uh, some logical way. Maybe a bit on the thin side, too thin, if there is such a thing in a slicing test.
Perhaps. Perhaps not. Let's do some more. We can do some. I mean, if there's anyone that actually prefers eating uh, tomatoes this way. <laughs> Very thin slices now. What should we do with this one? Maybe just do some round full circles. So this was the the tomato rays. So I'm gonna put these on the plate, and then we're gonna do a um, a summary of sorts uh, from this vegetable slicing test. So here is the final. Uh, I was gonna say the final dish, but the final. Uh, the final plate. It doesn't look quite as, as nice as the the first plate we did with the with the tropical theme, but uh, I mean it is a, a healthy plate of uh, vegetables, and I do think that knife performed quite well cutting the paprika, the aubergine, the zucchini, uh, the cucumber, and also the um, uh, the tomatoes. So. Uh, like I said with the with the tropical plate, this knife is actually or actually this knife is indeed a a amazing little slicer. Uh, limited sort of only by the the blade length. But even so we can see that that you can actually cut up most vegetables with this short of a blade. But I will say that you know, if I should try with a, um, you know, slicing up a, a watermelon or maybe even honey melon or something like that, it would probably prove to be uh, sort of a challenge. I mean, the the pineapple uh, was sort of stretching it maybe, but uh, all in all, a really nice slicer for fruits and vegetables. Uh, now we only have one part left of the food prep segment, and that is going to be some fish and meat. So we'll see how the knife holds up for those tasks. Here we have the next part of the food prep, and this is some really nice thick pieces of uh, tuna. Fresh, brick, nice pieces. I'm a big fan of sushi and sashimi myself, but um, I'm gonna put a few of these on the grill later on. Not these two pieces, I have some more, but these two, I wanna, you know, just see how I can slice with this uh, little fruit and vegetable slicer. Hopefully it can slice fish and meat somewhat well too. Hope it's visible in the camera now. 
Nice. Super nice actually. Gonna make for some nice sushi pieces. Not your typical Japanese chef knife, huh? But it slices really well. Look at that, my new sushi knife, <laughs> wouldn't you know, huh? It's gonna be a lot of sushi tonight. I've got to say that I am I'm pretty impressed really impressed with this one to be honest I'm really hungry as well now so this was the tuna slicing test we also have some other meats we're gonna cut up but uh, before we do that I think I wanna eat a few, or actually all of these. Man, that is delicious. Look at that. Here we have the final part of the, um, the third food segment. I'm gonna throw in a bonus clip I think of you know me peeling an apple with this knife because it seems like a fun thing to do. But uh, right now we, uh, we're gonna try to um, process this, um, this piece of um, this piece of meat. Mm -hmm. I'll do this all separately.
Should have removed this from the get go. So I would say it works um, works nice as a meat slicer as well. I mean the fish it did an excellent job with the tuna and I think it did a really good job with uh, with this uh, with this piece of of meat as well. Um, depending on if you want to make like a stew or something you could also like of course just chop chop them up, slice them up and and a tad smaller pieces like this. I actually think that is what I'm gonna do tonight. So there we go, small processed pieces, ready to make a stew of some sort. So I guess, <laughs> I guess this um, concludes uh, the official food prep segments. But like I stated, I'm gonna make one extra video where I peel an apple. I hope my skills have improved even better and I hope this knife will take it to the next level. So, uh, over and out for now, I guess. 
So I mentioned something about peeling an apple and uh, well here we have an apple. Here we have a classic freedom. So um, I guess there's not much more to it than to just start uh, peeling away. Let's see if this is gonna be a good angle. I want us to, to shove in the camera. So let's see what we can do. You know, I've never claimed to be good at peeling apples. You know, I never do it. I eat the peel. I just do like this when I'm making uh, making video reviews. And even so, I've only done it for like two or maybe three reviews. I should probably, you know, sit down for a day with a basket full of apples and just try to get the uh, the routine in because I I mean there must be some special technique or something that I uh, that I have yet to learn or maybe certain apples are in fact easier than others to peel like I don't know green apples versus red apples or well I don't know something like that um, no, I almost feel ashamed doing this, but uh, I mean, I, I do it for you guys, so you don't, so you don't have to do it, or something like that, huh? Well, I'm not sure. You are probably more, more, you know, experts in this field, but uh, I feel like this apple is sort of peeled now. So, it took me probably about, I don't know, two minutes. Not sure if that's good or bad, but uh, there we have it. An apple peeled. I'm gonna have to check if it's a new record or not. <laughs> We have done a lot of cutting and slicing with the classic freedom. Uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, fish and pork, uh, different kinds of paper, etc. Uh, we've shaved some leg hair, uh, but I thought it could be interesting to uh, do some cutting of paracord in, uh, in a few different uh, uh, thicknesses. Starting with the thinnest, going up to the, to the thickest. And I'm not gonna cut like endless amounts of um, paracord here in an attempt to dull the knife or anything. I'm just, you know, I just want to see if we can, yeah, have it perform doing some some random cutting. I guess that's uh, that's it. So uh, let's uh, let's begin. I think that uh, the red one here, this is uh, easily the thickest one. The golden one is the second thickest one. The blue one, the third thickest one. And no, wait, the blue one is actually the, the thinnest one. And this, these two are uh, the second thinnest ones. So let's uh, let's start by you know just. Just doing some cutting and see how it performs. This didn't prove much of a challenge. Let's do this. This could be interesting. So not not much of a challenge. Going on to the orange pieces, maybe we should do like double straight off. And maybe like four of them 
It's gonna be a bit tight, but uh, clean cuts. Then we have the um, the golden one. This one is actually this one is actually pretty, th you know, pretty thick paracord. Or I mean, it's all relative, but Let's see if you can get focus on the cord here. Yeah. Not much of a challenge. Let's do it. Uh, let's try to make it more of a challenge in some sense. This could be interesting. These four together. Camera, nice cuts, clean cuts, very nice actually. Let's see if we can add one more. This might be um, <laughs> all of this might be pushing it a bit. Should have been slightly longer. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> This looks, this looks kind of interesting. Yeah, let's do this. Did we get them all? Yeah, we did. That's pretty nice. Not bad. Let's go over to the th absolute thickest one. So this is the thickest piece and I think we're gonna do like this straight off the bat. Oh man, maybe it's maybe I should have brought more. Can we do this? Like this? Or is it too short? Yeah, let's um, see if we can make this work. Three, two, one, or wait. Cut them up pretty good. Not bad. Not bad at all. Sweet little performer. If you need to cut something or slice something, this one will be up for the task. No doubt. I wonder how sharp it is right now. Maybe we should... Should we go for some arm hair? I don't have a lot of arm hair. But it is a lot finer than... than my... Uh, my leg hair. Let's see. Oh man, I have too little arm hair. Oh, it shaves. Shaves nicely. Not bad. Yeah, I'm not even sure you can see the actual hair, but uh, my arm hair is uh, it's pretty it's pretty fine because it never gets a chance to huh, grow long. I guess that's the case with most people that enjoy sharp knives. 
I like this one. I've said it a few times in this, you know, full video review, but this is a pretty damn fine slicer. And I want to try to cut some leg hair as well, because at least that can be seen on the video, hopefully. Let's see if I have some... Uh, and I've been removing too much. Let's see. Uh, oh, this camera a bit. Do we see anything here? This is at least slightly more visible to the camera. Maybe if we get some some zoom. Uh, I'm not sure again if it can be seen, but it shaves pretty well. Sweet. So it's started raining a bit again, not a big issue. Uh, thought we could do some some small, you know, mini carving or something like that. Let's see if I can order this camera. Bit, maybe like that. Not too bad. Let's see if we can zoom in. And also get it to be in focus would probably be a good thing, huh? Yeah. Man, the weather is crazy today. One second, it's... oh, this is gonna be an interesting part. One second, it's shining sun. Second, crazy rain, like right now. Hopefully the camera will be okay. Maybe I should... Uh, I don't know. Should be okay, I have the camera placed under a fairly large oak for some... Um, some protection. See if we can do some really fine, tiny feathers. We can get it to s get some better zoom going. So let's see if we can do this again. Bit zoomed in. Man, it's raining a lot. Regardless, here we go. I think I broke the tip, but not before getting some uh, some pretty decent um, semi decent feathers. Can go at it again, and it's getting so wet. Everything. Yeah, I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make it finer the tip here before starting with the actual. Uh, feathers. Okay. 
Great. So now we can start with the with the feathers again. Are we in focus? I think we are, sort of. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, well, regardless, it is possible to make some some super fine feathers. Um, it's possible to slice. Here's actually a bit tricky part. You see this big knot here? Carve around it. There we go. Then we actually have a second knot here as well. actually make it a challenge to see how thin we can make this piece, the connecting piece here. Man, it's raining like crazy. Jesus Christ, yeah. Oops. Well, as you can see, it wasn't much it was connected to, to be honest, before it fell, fell off. That's a pretty fine, oops, fine tip, I'd say. I think I'm gonna have to pack up a bit here now, because uh, I don't wanna risk my camera getting uh, destroyed by the water, since it's actually not fully waterproof. Me, myself, well, I'm semi-waterproof. The weather is finally breaking up. Had some crazy raining going on here just you know minutes ago. Uh, now the sun is blessing out with its uh, warm rays. Uh, I did find a good spot here under a, a rather large oak, so the camera should be somewhat safe. Uh, I can hear some distant thunder going on here. I'm not sure how well it can pick up in the camera, but um, doesn't doesn't really matter. I think the rain is actually starting to... Yeah, there's a the thunder and some light rain again. Like I stated, we should be we should be good to go, good to go regardless. Uh, so this will be like one of the absolute final segments or clips for my uh, video review of the classic freedom uh, and I I really enjoyed making this review it was uh, it was tons of fun uh, maybe not as much uh, of variation going on as with the Millicore or the South Pole or the Apocalypse but this blade is uh, slightly more limited in its uses and that is not something I say in a in a negative way because it isn't. Um, and you know, to be fully honest, I am quite surprised by how much I I like this blade. I did mention it earlier in this. Uh, I'm not sure how long this video review was going to be, but I bet it's going to be a long one. But I did mention somewhere that. Uh, 
you know, I, I, I waited quite some time getting this model. Uh, picking off the Apocalypse at first, going with the South Pole as my second and the Millicory as my third. Uh, had I known what I know today, uh, then I think I would have picked up the Classic Freedom earlier. Uh, not sure which of the other knives I would have waited with, but I maybe I just would have gotten it earlier together with the ones I already own and use. Um, and you know the reason why I waited so long getting the Classic Freedom is because you know it's not that I do not like small knives because I I do some of my favorite knives are are in definitely in the small category but I think maybe I thought the design to be too simplistic in some way uh, especially for a, a TRC knife but I should have learned by now that you know a simple design are sometimes also you know one of the best and or most efficient designs uh, then again I mean the design itself may be you know simple at a first glance but when you go into the details of a knife such as a classic freedom uh, you will see that there has been a lot of thought put into the design and you know, the, all the, you know, fit and finish, the grind lines, everything is just perfected. We have done tons of uh, slicing and cutting with this knife. Not so much, you know, work in the woods like uh, chopping, batoning, branching delimbing etc and uh, I mean you won't you won't see that in this in this review it's not that kind of a knife uh, I do bet that a knife would chop I mean not chop definitely not chop but would batoon uh, you know fairly fairly okay but once again we have to keep in mind that um, spine thickness this is a thin spine and it is a short blade length and that combo makes it not you know makes it not a, a very suitable knife for batoning but in terms of you know the blade not breaking or you know the, the steel just not holding up that is that is not going to be the issue the issue is more you know in terms of practicality uh, branching well, this knife is, I mean, I'm sure you can, I mean, you will be able to, to cut away small pieces of, of uh, you know, tiny twigs and branches. I mean, I, we could still do that. I mean, I do have the camera here, the battery is full, and I do have the knife with me, so I, I guess I, you know, I, I could do that. But it's not going to be like when I did the branching and the delimbing with the, with the south pole. I mean that extra weight and and, um, and overall design makes you know makes quite a difference. Uh, we haven't done any tip testing, and that's not because I, you know, I have any doubts about the tip breaking. Uh, the tip is quite stout. If you look at the in detail videos uh, of this knife, and there are several in this video review, uh, you will see that the tip is not. You know, it's not super, super thin in a way that it will break. Uh, it is a fine tip, but it's not a fragile tip, to put it like that. Um, oh, I did actually bring something with me. I forgot it now that I started record or recording. But I did bring some... Um, uh, let's see where I put them. I brought some different kinds of uh, paracord in, uh, in like four or five different uh, thicknesses, uh, thinking that we could still do some uh, some cutting um, to see how well it performs. Uh, but I'm actually <laughs> just gonna 
gonna mess up the timeline of the <laughs> of the video review but I'm gonna do some cutting with this but I'm gonna put that segment before this actual clip yeah something like that um, so I'm, I'm probably I'm gonna make that cutting thing now and then we will get back to this uh, you know this conclusion or summary of the of the classic freedom yeah well here we go the absolute final part of this video review um, still out in the woods and as you can see the weather turned for the worse um, that's how it goes no more sun I mean the sky is actually I think it's gonna rain for for some time to come uh, but I did manage to do the paracord video which you have probably seen by now if you have been following the the different segments in in the timestamp order or somewhat chronological order I guess uh, regardless I'm getting quite wet or I'm getting soaking wet here I had to sacrifice my um, my jacket for the camera I sort of want to save it from dying I did drop the camera uh, in the water before when I was out kayaking and it actually survived um, had to put in a bag of rice had to put it in the oven I had to put it in direct sunlight, etc. But it, it did survive. Uh, it might die later on from some corrosion is issues or whatnot. Uh, I mean, the camera sadly isn't made in M390 or LMAX for that part. Regardless, here is the Classic Freedom in its uh, soon to be wet formed sheath. Um, since the sheath fell out of my, my pocket and got soaked in water as well. I have actually, I have ordered a kydex sheath for my classic freedom i won't get it in a few days maybe like next week but when i do i will make a sort of a follow-up video just showing the kydex uh, and how it works and looks etc uh, i'm pretty sure it will work fantastic since um, trc knives makes in my opinion uh, the absolute best kydex sheaths in the world but to sum it all up to improvise and sum it all up this is an out of focus classic freedom Let's see if we can get it in focus maybe not this is a classic freedom in focus which is good the knife is a lot more beautiful than I am even with some dirt and stuff on it so my final words fantastic blade one of my um, new favorite blades in this specific size or not specific but in, in you know in, in a smaller knife category uh, much like the south pole spoke directly to my heart so did the classic freedom i guess there must be something to it with uh, with Andreas designs uh, I guess I should have learned by now that I probably need all of his knives and uh, once I have them all I can probably try to do some uh, uh, some listing with you know absolute personal favorites etc but that's gonna be you know well in the future uh, I guess that my next knife from TRC that I should look into uh, ought to be the this is freedom since it's uh, Something like I said before in my comparison with the South Pole, it's something uh, sort of in between, still quite different in design to the South Pole. But I mean, it's it's you know it's a longer, slightly thicker version of the Classic Freedom, and I mean, yeah, I think that could be an interesting knife to to check out, sort of. But uh, I think it's it's time to um, time to pack up. And head back home uh, take a hot shower that'd be nice uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video review and I hope I have been able to make this knife justice I feel like it is an underrated model for for a few different reasons I mean I was skeptic at first I mean I, I, I'm gonna be the first to admit it 
but I was uh, proven wrong the second I unboxed this knife, pretty much. If you like perfectly tempered M390, smaller size knife, give this one a go. I can pretty much assure you, you will not be disappointed. Don't wait as long as I did. Give it a chance. This knife deserves it. Those are my final words. Over and out for now. So here we have it in all its uh, wet glory. Classic Freedom, my companion of the day on my kayak excursion. Quite the extraordinary blade. I mean, you guys know how much I love the South Pole and everything and all the signs pretty much by TRC and Andreas, but this blade is just... Oh man, it's classy. And at M390 steel, somewhat thin spine, I mean this is... Hell yeah. This is one heck of a knife.